Political style points to President Biden, he just laid out how he will put Republicans, shall we say, in an uncomfortable position over the next few weeks. He's going to link Israel aid to Ukraine aid. He'll say that tomorrow night at 8 p.m. when he speaks to the nation. In July, 70 House Republicans supported an amendment by Matt Gates to cut off military aid to Ukraine. In September, that grew to 93. So a vote for aid to Israel is a vote for aid to Ukraine, which is increasingly unpopular among firebrand Republicans. And then, of course, President Biden will hammer Republicans for not having a speaker. Politically, it's a pretty shrewd move. Senator Pete Ricketts is here from Nebraska. Israel's universally popular among the among Congress. Wide bipartisan right. support. Wide bipartisan support. What's going to happen here? Well, it's a great question. I support Israel. We need to stand with Israel in this horrible, brutal attack of Hamas on the Jewish people, the worst loss of life since the Holocaust in a single day. And I know that many of my colleagues feel the same way. I also support Ukraine. Right. Uh, we can't let Putin be successful because if he is successful in Ukraine, he's a dictator. So what he's going to do is start looking for other targets. If he picks the Baltic states, for instance, then we will be in a shooting war with Russia. So we need to discourage that. This is the way dictators behave. I get, I get that. Yeah. Not all Republicans do. Right. It, this is going to get complicated, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. Because I certainly got colleagues who either are with us on Israel, but not in Ukraine, or maybe they're both. And, of course, I haven't been here that long, but I have been here long enough to know that you got to actually read the bill and see if it's what it actually says. So uh, we'll see what actually the president comes back with. But it is going to be something where I know some of my colleagues are going to be conflicted about that. And, frankly, a better process would be to give people a chance to vote on it and be able to vote for things they want to do. But this place isn't really about really good process right now. It's one of the things that we have an opportunity to fix because it's really <laughs> broken right now. The process is broken. Now, I think people would agree on that. Uh, there's something that's interesting that is happening in the Democratic Party. There is becoming in not even sort of a pro-Palestinian but a pro-Hamas part of the Democratic caucus, specifically Rashida Tlaib, who had some pretty troubling things to say today. Republicans in the past, every Republican has been made to answer for the craziest among you, right? Uh, we can think about about January 6th and about the election and other issues. That's fine. That's the standard that's been set. What do you make of the fact that that's not happening for Democrats about the craziest among them in their caucus on the issue of Israel? Yeah, it is something that it's like, why do they get a free pass on this when they say crazy things? Because if you are on the side of Hamas, right, you are on the side of people who have raped women and pray them bloody through the streets who have, you know, the reports about beheading babies and toddlers. I'm like, really? This is the people you want to be on the side with? Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And why there isn't more of this is, from the mainstream media is just beyond me, because it seems like the black and white here is pretty clear. The black and white is pretty clear. Conceivably, uh, you know, raping, raping women and beheading babies is something we can all rally against. You listened to President Biden today when he was in Israel. I was struck by what he didn't say about the hostages. He didn't say he was going to hold Iran responsible for the He didn't the mention Iran at all. Yeah. Didn't mention at all. And that's who sponsors all of this. That's the crazy part. Iran, Hamas wouldn't exist without Iran. And the president has said nothing about this. And neither has the administration. Surprise you? It does, because they are the largest state sponsor of terrorism. And they're a theocracy that, frankly, they don't think like we think. And yeah. to think that we can throw them a bunch of money and somehow they're going to play nice... That's just not reality. Yeah, it does seem in a way that President Biden's still trying to hold on to the reproachment with Iran. Um, Appeasement, I would call it. Your word? Uh, his would be reproachment. We'll, we'll leave it there. Senator, it was great to see it. We really appreciate it. Thank you, as always. Uh, Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.